I'm John Bowden. It's part three of our conversation with Chris DeBerg. This is Rock History Music. Where, what, where do we go when we die? What, what's your take on that? Where do we go when we, we pass away? I think there's two things could happen. The one I favor is absolute oblivion. It's like when you fall asleep, but you're not dreaming and your body just gives up the ghost. Um, I think that's one thing. And I know that we as sensible and thinking human beings would like it to be otherwise, but eternal life, no, that's not for me. No, thank you very much. That would be pretty terrible. Um, it could be that we've had so many people um, with visions that they've had of reaching a certain point and that those people have gone before reaching for the hand. This, for me, it sounds like a, a thing in your brain that's already pre-programmed from birth that allows you to get through the trauma of dying. At the facility, it's, it goes through this sort of dream sequence as we disappear into you know, the future. Um, uh, you know, I was brought up in a castle and I, I've experienced poltergeists and felt the spirits and stuff. So we don't actually know what the hell goes on. But you know something, John? I think there is a sixth dimension. We are energy. One thing I've learned about this whole COVID mess is that those people who say, no, I'm not going to get vaccinated, they think they've got a different body set up than the rest of us. This is rubbish. We have the same cellular structure in all of us, identical. Apart from men, women, there's slight differences, but um, we are made of cells and atoms and molecules. There might be something about this, the way this energy survives that um, does bring us into a new dimension. One day I, I thought maybe we're little like drops of water going into a massive ocean and then we get collected and put into another soul um, to go forward to, for, with another human being. I, who knows? We'll, we'll all find out. Well, like for instance, open your eyes, which is, you know, you can, if you think you can make a difference where you had said in the video that he decided to live a better life, a conscious decision, a fork in the road, changing the trajectory of your life. That's a big moment for yeah. anybody. It's a big moment. This is probably the second most important moment in the whole story because he's come back from the Crusades. He's been sent there with a bishop's blessing that they'll all be heroes. And it, that's, it's all about money and, and murdering um, the, the Muslims. So, comes back and he's, uh, he, he can't, he's like so many young men coming, even these days, what we call now um, post-traumatic stress disorder. Young men who've seen things and they've done things ho absolutely horrific that, that no young man ever should have to do. And he goes and lives in the woods and one day Marion comes to find him with a couple of the men who's fought with him in, in the Crusades and says, um, you've got to come and see what's going on here. And he says, not interested, go where I, I don't want to talk to you. Um, and she says, no, you must. He says, no, it's not my business. And she says, well, it is your business. You're the other hunting man. You can change things. And he keeps persisting. He says, no, look, leave me alone. And finally, one of the other two soldiers says, look, we fought together um, outside the walls of Jerusalem. Please come with us. And reluctantly, that's the key point. He goes to, to a local village and then he sees the desperate poverty and what the king's taxation has done to the poor people. And that is the switch in his head. He goes, right, I'm going to do something about this. And that is the key point. And that is a challenge. You know, we're not born heroes. Um, there's no such thing. But we are put in a situation, I, you and I, I don't know what we would do if, for example, like the two young men who were walking across Westminster Bridge in London uh, last year, and a young girl fell in the water. Both of them stripped off their clothes and jumped in instantly. I don't know if I would have had the courage. Um, one of them died and drowned and the other saved the girl. Now that for me is instant courage, instant heroism. Long-term heroism is, I would believe this girl, Greta Thunberg, who was as a schoolgirl, said, I've had enough of this global warming crisis created by our forefathers and our ancestors and our parents, grandparents. I want to do something about it. And she's been vilified but she's become a, a heroine for millions of young people who it's their world, you know, and she's, that's for me as a hero. I was just watching a video of her last night. It came on MSNBC of her dancing at that, at that, uh, that, 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 and I remember going, Oh yeah, I forgot. She's a little girl. I forgot that she's just mm. a, a young girl. Cause she was acting is, yeah. her age, you know, where I, I look at her as a, uh, an adult. Um, what about the poltergeist? Like you said, what was, what, what did that come out? What was that experience? Glasses smashed in the night. Um, 
things that happen, cards that were set out on the table, stacked up again. Um, just extraordinary. They, they often say poltergeists are caused by the energy given out by young, possibly young girls, 13, 14, or young men of that sort of age. Um, that, I mean, that kind of thing happened. And, and you kind of get the feeling, I mean, this castle originally was started 800 years ago, and then in the 1500s, they built most of what exists today. Um, I mean, you were just talking just about religion. You know, this is this is an area that it's a bit like, are you vaccinated or not vaccinated? It causes divisions and stuff. Um, but for me, I don't know why a man wearing a white um, sort of garbing robe and having read a lot of stuff and read the Bible a few times, why he knows more about the afterlife than me, because... Or, or anybody. So I, I, I'm a bit like you. I was never a Catholic. I'm a Protestant by upbringing, and I would respect anybody's religion. But nevertheless, you've got to ask, how the heck do they know all that stuff? They don't. A little boy in, in Mumbai is as important a spirit and a soul as the Pope. That's my feeling about it. Yeah, well said. I agree. I agree with you.